A 3-0 sweep on the morning wager yesterday. The haters and the losers are in shambles, Mark Zinno, after we break out the broom on yes. Wednesday. Well, guess what we're going to do to top that today? we got three Major League Baseball winners for you again, plus college football talk as well. I'll be breaking down a game for tonight. Mark's talking the big game, Clemson and Georgia, on Saturday. But we're going to start with something unprecedented here on the program, yeah. Mark. For today's yeah. double play, you and I are going to talk about the same game, but we have very different wagers. I will cede the floor to you first, my kind sir. Well, thank you for a quick little short uh, address here. Just remember, uh, as yesterday's 3-0 sweep, guys, guess what? You know what? Uh, if you get more right than wrong, you don't need a gimmick. You see? Like, that's how it works in this business. If you just get more right than wrong, <laughs> then people will follow you and understand what you're saying. So there's your free tip for the day. Um, we get more right than wrong on the show. We're very proud of it. Okay, Mets D-backs. Now, I cashed a bet uh, on this particular play earlier in the week when I took the over in the first game of this series. UBP took the over in the second game of this series. Today, we have a pitching yes. matchup, which we view very differently because you're a nerd and you like stupid stats, and I actually like baseball. Um, David <laughs> Peterson goes up against Riney Nelson. Ryan, whatever. Ryan. Weird name. Riney. Uh, R-Y-N-E is Riney, where I come from. Anyway. What turns me on about David Peterson, it's not his beard or his long flowing locks. Uh, what turns me on about David Peterson, of pitchers who have made at least 15 starts this year, he owns the absolute very highest run support at 6.93 runs per start. He has a 2.85 ERA. So you carry the two. That's more than four runs difference. So David Peterson also, when he starts, the Mets are 12 and three in his 15 starts. I kind of feel like that's the situation that I want to back. I kind of feel like the guy who gets the most run support in all of baseball, I kind of want to get behind. I feel like this is a good spot here for me to take the Mets' first five money line at basically even money, maybe even a little bit of plus money if you shop around. Keep the tie in my back pocket if I need it. Why? Because Ryan Nelson stinks. Ryan Nelson's ERA at home this year is a lofty 4.95. Opposing hitters are batting 284 against him. You know what the Mets do on the road really well, BP? Go ahead. Tell the people Please. what the Mets do on the road really well tell them no no i don't want to do that because i like the other side today i'm not going to tell you that. you're a tool uh, uh the mets <laughs> pull a lot of runs on the road. in fact the eighth most they runs on the road in all of major league baseball so Wasn't they hit the ball well on the road they score a lot on the road they're backing a pitcher that they traditionally score a lot for and you know what because the mets bullpen a little bit shaky after eighth inning grand slam last night arizona's bullpen is shaky too kind of want to keep them in but willing to keep them out because you know what the Mets have sco the Mets scored eight runs in the first five innings in the first game of this series, and they scored five runs in the first five innings of the game last night. So I think the Mets are going to score more runs early in this thing. I'm going to back David Peterson and his lovely beard and his long flowing locks and kind of poo on Rainey Nelson because, well, he stinks like you do because you're dumb enough to go pick the other side of this thing. Yeah, I am. And I'm not dumb. I'm taking the Arizona Diamondbacks yeah. full game. I'm going against Great. you here for my half double. Great. So we both can be right for the record. If the Mets are winning in the first five and the Diamondbacks win the game, it could be 2-0. Oh. That's threading a needle, yeah. certainly. But let me tell you about Ryan Nelson, okay? You say this guy stinks? Not he recently. La not recently he has it. Last seven starts, 2.91 ERA. He's got 49 strikeouts his last 43 and a third innings, okay? So I think Nelson's turning a corner. And – the biggest difference that you and I have is on this David Peterson. You and I, you're a big fan of looking at the run support a pitcher typically yes. gets, where I think yes. that's fluky. I think it's completely, and it's no, why it's Peterson has the 12 no, three teams. It's oh, it's fluky. Fluky. Look, it's not. It's not. The 6.93 runs are actually happening. They've actually so, happened. So, it's random. So they, they look at the guy and swing the bat better? No. Let me tell you about David Peterson. Yeah. This guy is the biggest fraud of any starter in Major League Baseball. You mentioned the 2.85 ERA. Well, guess what? Get ready to do your Brian Power nerdy voice right now, there okay? But he's got a 5.28 expected ERA. That is the yeah. biggest difference between actual and expected ERA of any starter yeah. in Major League Baseball. Yeah. This guy yeah. is a bigger fraud, Peterson, than Bernie Madoff. Off, okay, that's how big of a fraud this guy is. That's, that's how many, and, and Bernie Madoff ripped the Mets off before, by the way. 
Don't play one and a half with the home team because you don't get the oh, no, night. Don't deviate it. And and guess don't what? Don't play the expected ERA of a guy is more important than his actual ERA. It I'm is. Right. Okay, it is. Okay, and guess what? We're not laying the one and a half because we don't have to. Arizona's a short favor of the money. You talk about the Mets scoring on the road? Well, guess where Arizona scores a lot of runs? Home, road, the moon, Neptune. They don't care. As long as they're playing baseball, they've been the highest scoring team in all of baseball since the All-Star break. I hate David Peterson. He's going to get shelled today. Arizona. Arizona. What's that? You picked the wrong planet because they score on Uranus is where they score. Yeah, there you go. Okay, there we go. I'll tell you what. There you go. That's going to be David Peterson after the third inning today. Okay, right there. uh, I like Arizona money line. Okay, but here's the thing. And Brian brings up an excellent point here because we both can be right. The Mets can lead early and uh, Arizona can lead late and obviously win the thing. But that would tell you that the the D-backs would need a rally. And Brian Power, I found out something yesterday. You can't have a rally. Without a rally a, burger, a, baby. A rally burger. Tell the story. Okay, I had the people in tears at Progressive Field. So, as you know, if you listen to the show yesterday, I said I was going to the Guardians game. We met a, I met a fan of the morning wager, yes. Ken Dworziak. I hope I got your last name right, Ken. If not, re- nevertheless, you're a great person. I, I met you. Kidding. It was great to meet you. He came up, said the morning wager was his favorite show. He yeah. said, "How you doing today?" I said, "Well, I think as you know, I'd be a lot better if the Guardians scored four more runs." Guess what? I went, I bought a rally. I told my buddies, I'm like, you know what? I'm getting another rally burger. I don't care. Okay? If this is going down, at least I'm going to be full. It's a great name for a burger. (laughs) There you go. That was me. I go up and I buy this. So I go up and I buy this rally burger, Zeno. Okay? They're down five to two, the Guardians are, going into the bottom of the seventh. And what the guy, the guy who's, you know, the usher or whatever, he's like, well, how are you doing? I'm like, I'd be a lot better if we had four more runs. He hands me the rally burger, and I kid you not, as he's handing it to me, home run for the Guardians. I start screaming. I was channeling my inner CT bets. You can't have a rally without a bleeping rally burger. People in the concourse were in tears. This guy who gave it, he like falls over. He's rolling on the ground. A woman is shuttling her kid away from me because she's very scared to show that part of the world. Next thing you know, the Guardians won the game 6-5. All the people on Twitter were stunned who were mocking me for taking the Guardians. That was yesterday, though. This is today. You and I are on opposite sides of this Mets-Arizona game where you like the Mets in the first five. I like Arizona full game. Comment down below what you think about that game. Comment down below with your favorite bets for Wednesday. Our best bet, something Mark and I do agree on. We do agree uh, from time to time. We're going to agree on this total coming up in a little bit. But, Mark, you know, yesterday I was thinking back. You and I did not do a great job of promoting ourselves, I think. Oh, uh, well. So let's do that right. Let's do that right now because we're I, we're modest people, right? We let our work do the talking for us. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. Well, would you like to tell you have got this fine baseball record here in the month of August? Uh, why I don't do. you tell people about that and what you've got on tap at Wager Talk for Thursday? I mean, the air at the top of the leaderboard is very clear. So uh, we 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 breathe it all in and we continue to cash tickets. Uh, so. Guys, I'm really like. I, I, here's the thing. I know I'll have at least two. I'm deciding if I want to add a third today. Uh, one of those plays is a prop. Uh, I think I have found, and I told Brian Power, he, he was shocked at how excited I was at the prop play that I had found today and the numbers that backed it up. BP, can you at least validate for those people that I'm not making this up about the, the, no, the I, kind I, of edge that we have in this prop here? <laughs> You are generally always excited about something or fired up about something before 8 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever been this fired up about something. I, I mean, just it, it, it jumped off the board and screamed at me. So one of our plays that definitively would be this prop. I'll have at least one more. I'm trying to decide if I want to add the second because, you know, when we got over our skis and did the four plays earlier this week, no bueno. No bueno. We've, we've gotten successful this month by keeping the cards short uh, and staying with, uh, with with things that we really like and, and kind of eliminating variants. So, uh, anyway, wt.buzz slash mz, where you guys go. Uh, those plays will be up right after the show. Continuing to stay hot. Let's finish August strong. Get us right into college football. Again, wt.buzz slash mz. I went 2-0 and o yesterday. Not only did I have the Guardians, as oh, Mark mentioned earlier, I had the over on the Mets D-backs. Stop it. They all care. I'm 5-1-1 one one the last five days overall. I'm going to have one Major League Baseball play for you. My top play will be in a joint package with my top college football play for Thursday. You can get both of them for just $29 right there, wt.buzz slash BP. Don't forget, 
about that free week of winners you can get as well. Just click the deals tab at wagertalk.com. You buy two weeks, we throw a third week in free of charge. That'll cover you all sports, not just football, but baseball and anything else we do as well. Soccer, UFC for some of the folks, uh, whatever. Uh, you can get it all three weeks for the price of two. All right, show best bet time, Mark, and then we'll get to the college football. Braves, Phillies, big showdown in the NL East. The Braves have taken two of three from the Phillies in each of the three previous series between those teams. That's interesting, given that the Phillies are in first and the Braves are in second. Braves are coming off a big sweep in Minnesota. We're staying away from the side here. We're looking at the total. Uh, what do we think here? Why don't you tell the people? Well, we get two starters here who are actually, you know, fairly decent. I mean, um, Charlie Morton is always a mixed bag. What do I tell you guys about Charlie Morton? Either it's six innings in one run or five and a third of six runs. So, you know, you get good Charlie, you get bad Charlie. Uh, the other guy on the mound for the field is Christopher Sanchez. Uh, he's been very, very good at home. Uh, that much we will say. In fact, Christopher Sanchez just faced – uh, the Braves last week when these two played in Atlanta, I was actually at that game. Uh, and Ooh. it ended up being a 3-2 Braves win. Sanchez pitched really well. Interesting to note are the first nine games. The first four in the series, when three of them were played the very first week of the season, uh, the first four in this series all went over the total. The last five have gone under the total. So what does Brian Power love to do when he sees that streak? Not ride the under. <laughs> we're going to go over here. Uh, Braves have started to figure it out. Look, this is a Braves team that in the last three games in the sweep of the Minnesota Twins scored 10, 8, and 5 runs. Have they turned the offensive corner? like to think so. Um, you know, the Phillies, outside of getting shut out yesterday, took two of three at home versus a very good Astros team. But prior to that, you know, they were pouring on runs and sweeping Kansas City. So uh, these are two offenses that can go. I think we get offense here given the starting pitchers. Um, in the matchup. Look, if Charlie Morton is on and on early, this thing is probably dead uh, just because I don't think that uh, the Phillies will get to him late or get to the Braves bullpen, which is pretty good. So uh, we could even look to a first five over here, given the starters, but let's take the full game over here. BP at eight and a half. There you go. Show best bet over eight and a half Braves Phillies. That is major league baseball. Normally, this would be the end of the show, but guess what? Week one of college football is here, so we've got more content for each of you, for all of you, pardon me. I'm going to start because my game I'm talking about is tonight. Uh, North Carolina and Minnesota, I guess this would be the headliner uh, on a short card. There's some FCS action as well, in addition to the two FBS versus FBS games. Mark, I like the under in North Carolina and Minnesota. I know we've, at first... This total got as low as 49 earlier in the week. Now it's been bet back up. That's okay. I'll take the under at the better number. Uh, Minnesota cannot get into a shootout with North Carolina. Full candor. I, you know, this P.J. Fleck, this row the boat gimmick, I've never been a huge fan of that. However, I do think Minis first game of the year, some jitters, some rust, some new players. I, I think these teams are going to struggle. Remember, North Carolina – they have to replace a lot on the offensive side of the ball. The market has moved heavily towards the Tar Heels. I'm sure everyone watching already knows that they are now the favorite in this game. But remember, not only do they have to replace Drake May, but uh, their top wide receiver as well, uh, Tez Walker, he's gone. So this is not going to be the same explosive offense we've seen out of Chapel Hill the last few years. Minnesota, they've never had an explosive offense. And... Their stud running back, Darius Taylor, he's been limited in practice. So is the top wide receiver, Jackson. That would not be great because last year, Minnesota was 11th in scoring in the Big Ten. Uh, you know, now there's a million teams in the Big Ten, but there weren't ne nearly as many. There's 14 teams in the Big Ten last year. So this is not an offense that can get it going. I think the defenses, uh, Minnesota's defense is traditionally pretty good. North Carolina's defense, I think, should be better. Mark, the uncertainty on offense has me under 51 in this one that is how i would play uh north carolina minnesota that was a really long-winded way to get there uh just let you know that well i've had all off season i've had all off season to study i thought it was a pretty one. short i thought it was short I thought I mean, it was to the I, point I, there we go tokyo my man tokyo brandon down. agrees with me he's saying I, short I, I think your breakdown of uh, uh david peterson was actually better than that just want you to know that <laughs> Okay. Would you like to talk about Clemson, yeah. Georgia? 
Uh, because yeah. I'm sure many people in your neck of the woods would like to hear about that. I'm sure our fans of the Morning Wager would like to hear about that. By the way, smash that like button if you agree with this, if you love this content we're giving you. Uh, I'm sure they do. I'm sure that people love all of it uh, as we bicker back and forth like an old married couple. Um, that said, um, <laughs> look, listen, this is a, a, a very interesting game. Um, there's a lot of changes on both sides of the ball. Uh, for the Georgia Bulldogs. Why? Because they lose guys to the NFL every single year, right? Like That's just kind of the way it goes down. So um, this is a, a Clemson team, honestly, that defense will be their calling card, right? Um, their linebacking core is excellent. Barrett is a first-team preseason All-American. He's the spark plug for this entire defense. This is a defense that I think can hang with Georgia. Now, Carson Beck, the quarterback for Georgia, um, last year was one of the top quarterbacks in the country. He's the second favorite to win the Heisman this year already. However, Brock Bauer has gone to the NFL. Lad McConkey gone to the NFL. The entire receiving core has been turned over. Um, they have suspended players, Georgia does, on offense. ETN is not going to play. Robbins is not going to play just because of some behavioral stuff. And Georgia's offense might be a little bit sluggish. Last year, when Mike Bobo, who was the OC, took over after – being fired at one point and then coming back to Georgia. First four games, they sputtered. They struggled. This was not an offense that you really wanted to back. Remember, there was a time, I think they beat South Carolina only 20-14. to 14. They were trailing 14 nothing at half. I think it was week three last year. We were just all remarking how bad this offense is. Obviously, Georgia turned it on. All this put together, Clemson's defense against a questionable Georgia offense, questionable for Georgia level, guys. Um, and Georgia's defense against a Clemson offense with Cade Klubnik who's been okay. He's had a, he had a lot of expectations coming in as one of the most highly touted recruits coming out of high school, just hasn't really lived up to it. Um, so the Clemson offense, like last year, be a little bit of a concern. I think defenses win the day. We get a total of 48 and a half here. Uh, I would even also look to the first half under because you know my theory, BP, if they ain't scoring early, they probably ain't scoring late. But I would tell you mm -hmm. it's more likely where they play slow early. Don't Neither team wants to make the big mistake, so the pace starts slow, and then they pick it up in the second half. I think that's more likely of a game script that happens. But, yeah, either first half under, full game under here. I think with defenses win the day. At the end of the day, this is probably one of two things. It's a place. It's a game where Georgia has to win 24-20, to 20, or it's a, probably a Georgia domination that ends up being like 23-10, to 10, and that's the end of the game, right? So yeah. uh, we're in that range right there, for my opinion. But again, under 48 and a half, my bet for Clemson, Jordan. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask you a quick follow-up in, in because you mentioned the first half under versus the full game under. In terms of the side, because you know a lot of people are going to want to bet the side, I kind of view that this game the same way, too. If I was looking at the Clemson side, I might want to just back them first half because I, I, yes. I have this horrible vision of, you know, Cade Klubnik maybe throwing a pick six at the end of the game and they lose by 14. Whereas right. if Clemson covers this game, they're certainly going to keep it close in the first half. I don't see a game script where they get down big early and then rally late. That, that That's right. not a scenario not in my head, I think. It's not a backdoor cover situation. I don't, I don't think okay. it's that way at all. I think, I, I think okay. again, Clemson in the first half, Clemson money line in the first half, where if the defenses win a day, it could be a 13-10 Clemson lead, right? Something like that. It could be a 10-7 you know, a, a, a Clemson lead. Remember, these two teams played a couple of years ago. It was a 7-3 game, right? It was no, no, oh, yeah, not that's right. Sport. The only touchdown was scored by a pick six by Georgia. Again, different teams, different players. You know, everything's different about it. But with all the time to prepare, I'll, I'll back Dabo here to keep this thing close uh, for the most part. But I agree with you the first half. If you're going to take Clemson, do it there. Because I, I don't think that if Georgia's defense is that suffocating against this Clemson offense, it'll be that way for four quarters. That's just the reality of the situation. Okay. What a supersized show this was today on the morning wager. We went 3-0 yesterday, today. Mark and I yelled at each other about a baseball game. Then we came back and agreed on our show best bet. And we gave you some college football as well. Feels so good to talk about college football. Um, does Mark Zitto cash tickets each and every single day, by the I way? I think he does. Hey. I think he does. I think hey. Do, 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 do. All right. I think uh, that's all I got. So let's hit that jingle, perhaps. Um, maybe we're not going to hit nope. the jingle. We're just going to make me look nope. like an idiot, I guess, at the end of the yes. show. Right. Thank you, Joe Ranieri. You uh, to slide when the jingle happens. That's not your job. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Joe Ranieri's making fun of me in my ear right now. I'm sorry. Because... I'm sorry. I'm, I'll never ask okay. for anything again. You know, what you fail to understand about you here is like you are like taking driver's ed right now. You're in the driver's seat. But there's a guy next to you who actually has pedals at his mm -hmm. feet. 
mm-hmm. and, and a secret oh. steering wheel that controls this whole thing. You just get oh. to think like you're driving. Oh. It's not your show. Yeah. That- Oh, I'm sorry. The See? more you know, the more you know. Somebody put the star right there. All right. Well, I hope you had a good time. I had a good time had learning had time. from Mark Zinno, learning from Joe Ranieri. Maybe David I'll Peterson. be able to drive around the block on Friday. I hate David Peterson. Nelson All sucks. right, everybody. David Peterson is expected ERA. We'll see you tomorrow. Stop it. <laughs>